So in this episode, I want to give a bit of a uh, tutorial on this hash table viewing tool um, that we saw in the previous uh, couple of lectures. Um, the, uh, the tool basically allows you to uh, observe how the table is being filled. It allows you to view, view um, different clusters forming. Uh, and then it allows you to sort of do statistics on the accesses in the tables. Uh, and this is, uh, this is meant uh, mostly as a simulation, uh, although it does, and it does actually use an actual hash table underneath all of it. Um, but, um, you know, its main purpose is this to uh, uh, observe what happens when you use different kinds of hash functions, uh, and what happens to your load factors and your access, or at least your access averages and, and your uh, uh, number of accesses needed to find different uh, elements in your table. Uh, when starting off on this program, you can set the size for uh, how many elements you'll have in your array. So you can go down to a small amount or you can go to something larger. If you do go to something large, it does give you a scroll bar to look at so that you can look at the different elements in the, uh, in the array. Defaults at 200, um, and you can do things like add, randomly add numbers into the table, or you can add your own numbers. So for instance, I want to add 201. I can add that to my table um, and do a find. I can add 200. Add that. Do a find on 200. Uh, when you do a find and you have a cluster, then what it'll do is mark the the actual the hash location that it started searching at, and then it marks with an X. The X marks the spot where it actually finds the object. Uh, it does not support um, um, searching for things that aren't in the table. It only allows you to search things that are in the table. Uh, you can clear a table and start over. Uh, when you do actually do your first add, um, it will shut off the options for selecting your um, hashing function. With uh, the square rotate 32, what this does is, uh, it's actually a rotate 16. What it does is squares the numbers uh, that you're going to add. Um, and it um, then rotates the, the bits um, and then uses that rotated version um, at, or by modding that rotated version uh, for adding the elements to the array. So it's a lot harder to sort of determine where things actually go. So if I add the number 25, for instance, I have no idea where that's going to go. Here you see that goes to the beginning. If I add 399 goes here. Anyway, so you can just essentially do the same thing of randomly adding things into the hash table. Uh, and then so if you clear the table, it'll give you the option again to reselect what your hash function is going to be. Uh, one of the things that it, that's interesting about this tool is if you do your ads, you can observe this by clicking and seeing how different clusters start to form. Um, you see that you get this nice little cluster forming there. I'm adding more elements. And these clusters just start to build after a while as the, as the load factor increases in the table. So you see here that um, this load factor is, this means that the table is about 60% full. Uh, if I do a find, so let me search for 209. This thing will tell me how many accesses it took to find the element. Um, and it'll mark, again, where it actually found the element. You can do an access average, which will um, attempt to access all of the, well, not just attempt, but it will access all the elements that are in the list, and then give you an average of the number of times it had to search in order to actually find the elements in, in the array. And so you see here the access average right now for this load factor of, of 6 is 1.3, which is pretty good. So it's, you know, you... Uh, have to check uh, one point or one, there's 1.3 accesses, so 
1.3 locations that are visited in order to find elements in the, uh, in the array. Which if you compare that with so, sort of like a linear search, if I was doing a linear search through this entire array, you know, 200 elements or 200 accesses that would have to go to to find the elements. Uh, even with uh, something like a, a log function where you're splitting this up in half every single time, you're still going to have uh, you know, a significant number of, uh, significantly more numbers of accesses in order to find uh, elements in, in the table. So hash tables uh, are uh, sort of interesting in that respect that they, they give you fast access to elements in your array. So anyway, what uh, you'll be doing uh, with this tool is using it to do these observations on what happens when you add things to uh, these hash tables. You'll also be defining things like your own uh, hash functions and accessing them through this function or through this program. So anyway, that concludes this episode.